Hello and welcome to part zero of my Let's Play series of videos for Dwarf Fortress. I know that you're probably thinking, hey, this is in part eight, and you're right. I realize that I probably need to get back to basics here. Um, some people might not know how all this stuff works, so I wanted to just kind of show you how to navigate um, the Lazy Noob Pack, um, all the features that it comes with, and uh, you know how you install it and all this stuff. Um, so the link that I provided to download the Lazy Noob Pack, you know, you basically go there, you're going to download it, it's probably going to be in an archive uh, folder, uh, meaning it's a zip file or a RAR file or something like that. Um, if you have Windows, it should have a built-in unzipping utility already, um, but you know, you can also use things like WinZip or WinRAR or 7-Zip or, you know, whatever. Anyway, um, once you've extracted the folder and put it, you know, in your documents or downloads or wherever you want it, um, this is what you'll have. You have your Lazy Noob Pack folder. So if I open up this folder, uh, you can see what's in here. Uh, there's a little readme, so if you kind of want to read this and see what he says about the Lazy Noob Pack, fine. Um, the main executable, the main uh, you know program for Dwarf Fortress is in this folder, the one that says Dwarf Fortress Phoebus 31.12 version 00. Uh, Phoebus, the Phoebus part of this, refers to the graphical tile set that they're using in this pack. Um, there are a ton of other ones and uh, you know you can research that on your own. Another one of the really popular ones is called the Mike Mayday tile set. Um, I'll put a link in the video if you want to check that one out. It's kind of a more um, more classical style. I like this Phoebus one the most and you know, in my personal opinion I think it's the best. So uh, then there's this aquifers folder. This is a utility that will let you turn off aquifers. You know personally I think that's cheating um, you know and you can embark somewhere where there's no aquifers, but I guess it's cool if like, for instance, you find uh, an embark area that is perfect in every way, except for it has those pesky aquifers. Well, you know, you can come in here and uh, go in here and disable aquifers. I think you need to copy this into, you know, copy this over the folder in your Dwarf Fortress directory. Um, anyway, so, you know, if I want to run the game, actually, um, all I need to do is go into this Dwarf Fortress Phoebus folder here and run this program, Dwarf Fortress, right there. You can make a shortcut to it by right-clicking, doing Create Shortcut, drag it onto your desktop. Pretty easy peasy. Okay, uh, then there's this Utilities folder. So Utilities has um, all of the other programs that I was telling you about that were packaged, <coughs> packaged up in this pack. So some of them are complicated this like perfect world DF for instance is a way uh, it's a more kind of advanced world generation utility where if you want to create a world with really specific parameters like you want a world that has a ton of volcanoes or you want you know to have a certain amount of you know um, elevation variation or whatever you can use this thing to do that I haven't personally used it I just know that's how it works um, DF hack has some kind of sort of cheaty things um, that will let you, for instance, reveal everything uh, on the map so you can see where all the good metals are without actually having to dig around. It takes a lot of fun out of the game, so... And, and it could potentially corrupt your save games, so I would strongly urge against using this stuff. It's there if you need it, but um, if you want to play the way it's meant to be played, I wouldn't mess around with it. Dwarf Therapist, which I'm going to show you in a minute, is a really useful utility. Um, that lets you basically um, assign uh, certain labors to your dwarves or prohibit them from your dwarves. Very useful. Perfect World, I uh, already went over that one. Quick Fort, uh, this is a way, if I remember correctly, to map out um, your fort in like an Excel document uh, before you start playing. And then, you know, it, it kind of lets you have a template so you can quickly kind of copy paste your template into the game. So you don't have to go through that, you know, manual, um, you know, manual designation of mining and channeling and stuff, um, you know, in real time. You can plan it out in advance. Kind of neat for some people. RuneSmith, to be perfectly honest, I'm not 100% sure what this does. StoneSense is a new utility that you can run um, while you are running your Dwarf Fortress game. So like you run Dwarf Fortress, you load up your save game, and uh, you know the game is running. And you can run this program here, uh, where is the executable? Here, StoneSense. If you run this, it will render um, your game in kind of an isometric, 
pseudo 3D view. It looks a, very similar to Farmville, if you know what that looks like, or uh, if you're old school, it looks like XCOM. It's kind of a three quarters top down pseudo 3D view. Pretty neat stuff if you want to look at your fortress in a different way. Um, and, you know, your dwarves look real cute and whatever. So that's basically it. So let's quickly take a look at Dwarf Therapist. I love this program. It's amazing. The more dwarfs you get, the more of a pain in the butt it can be to assign them different labors and things and manage whether they're idling or doing something useful or, you know. Anyway, so let's take a quick look at what all this stuff means. Um, when This is another one of those programs like StoneSense, which uh, you must have the game running for it to be able to read your game and import this data. So you start up Dwarf Fortress, like, you know, here I've got my Dwarf Fortress open. Um, this is where I left off in uh, part seven of the video. It's just paused right now. And uh, so it's read, it's read the data in the game. And it's now able to tell me not only um, what the, you know, relative skill level is of all of my dwarves in all of the different, you know, possible labors that they could have, um, but it lets me tell them whether or not they can perform those actions. So, you know, real quick, uh, if something here is, you know, highlighted in in blue, um, that means that that action is enabled, right? So, for instance, this one, Carpentry, I don't know if you can see it. If you have it, uh, this video running in HD, you could probably read all these just fine, but if you can't, I'll tell you. This is Carpentry. So my Carpenter, Logem Nika Tost, has Carpentry uh, labor enabled, and his skill in it, if I mouse over it, will tell me he's a proficient Carpenter. If you remember, um, I made him proficient Carpenter at the very beginning of the game. It will tell you how much experience he's got. Right now, he's uh, level 5. Um, he's got that amount of experience. The tooltip just went away, but he's got you know 3650 out of 4500 experience. Um, when I start making more beds and stuff, that's going to go up, and he's going to become a better carpenter. The bigger this square, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a little white square um, inside this square. The bigger that square is, the better they are at what they do. So for instance, my planter, and I believe that this is a guy that came in, um, one of the migrants, uh, sort of uh, in one of my earlier videos, he is level 13 as a high master grower. This guy is planning, planning so hard and so good. Um, you can see this square is really big, right? Well, let's say I don't want him to be a farmer. Um, I only want him to cook. You see, he has the cooking skill because he's got this square here, but it's not highlighted. So that means that if I want, if I, you know, I make a kitchen, for instance, and I assign the, the task at the kitchen to have somebody cook a meal, this guy won't do it. He doesn't have the labor enabled. If I want to make it so he can do it, I have to click this, and now the labor is enabled, and, um, you know, if I don't want him to farm, I can unclick this, and now that's unselected. It doesn't mean he doesn't have that skill anymore. It just means that he's not allowed to perform that labor. So anyway, I can, you know, change change around this. When you make a change and you want to save your change to the game, you need to click this button up here, Commit Pending Changes. So anything that you change here gets basically written into your game and uh, you know it will take effect immediately as soon as you unpause the game. So I'm going to change that back. Uh, what else is this useful for? It's really cool for when you have really high dwarf populations. You're going to find that you have a lot of dwarves that have pretty useless or, you know, at least relatively useless skills. Things like, I don't know, dying, uh, not dying like exploding in a spray of blood dying, but dying like, you know, dying clothes of color. Uh, and then, you know, they have, let's say, lye making. This is involved in soap making. And, you know, dwarves like to be clean, I guess, but they don't really care that much. Good for uh, disinfecting wounds, which is important. We'll get into the medical system later, but anyway. I'm diverging from the point. So what you can do in this case is you're going to have a lot of dwarves sitting around that have um, useless labors enabled. What you can do is just make them dedicated haulers. If you see, if you kind of scroll all the way over to the right here, there's all of these skills related to hauling. If you remember when I designated stockpiles in some of my later videos, um, dwarves, any, all dwarves have this enabled by default, right? So all of your dwarves are basically going to, you know, drop whatever they're doing. 
if they're not in the middle of something, you know, they're they're gonna go pick up your stuff and take it somewhere. Well, you don't want dwarves to have really important skills to, you know, drop everything to go haul stuff around. It's just not very efficient. So what you can do is the dwarves with the really superfluous or, you know, not super necessary skills, make them into dedicated haulers. And then everyone else, you can turn off the hauling task. So for instance, my, you know, miners, who I hope to keep busy almost all the time, I can come down here and turn off by, you know, clicking, I don't know if this is the miner I have selected right now, I can't see, but um, I can, you know, click this off and now they will not ever haul things. And then I can click, you know, commit pending changes and then they'll just be a dedicated miner and when they're not mining, they'll just go to my dining hall and drink beer and stuff. Anyway, so um, that's pretty much all I wanted to go over for uh, right now as far as other utilities in the Lazy Noob Pack. I'm sure I'll touch back on this later and uh, go into a little more detail in this utility and I'll show you a little bit about well, you know, what stone sense looks like and things like that. But anyway, just wanted to get that out of the way in case people had gotten, you know, now already seven videos deep and you know hadn't actually gotten around to installing the game or didn't understand how. So hopefully that's uh, cleared things up. If you had any kind of nagging questions in the back of your mind, you're not super computer literate or whatever. Anyway, um, if you have any questions, feel free to you know post in the comments or whatever, and I'll uh, try to answer as quick as I can. All right, thanks. Bye.